November 15th, 2021, a new dwarf planet has been discovered in our solar neighborhood. It was given the provisional name Zipe Totec. It has gone unnoticed due to its small size and complex orbit, but it recently passed close enough for the first image to be captured. August 7th, 2022, Zipe Totec has completed an unexpectedly close orbit of the Earth, grazing its Roche radius. Tidal waves are expected in the coming days. Authorities are warning not to approach the falling debris that was torn from the planet by Earth's gravity. May 30th, 2023. Concerns are mounting worldwide as flesh organisms grow unchecked. Seeds that fell on Earth during a close encounter with the living planetoid Zipe Totec appear to be fusing and consuming everything around them. Large swaths of the ocean floor being covered in flesh may lead to an ecological disaster, warns biologists. Breaking. We have lost connection with the James Webb Telescope. Its final message contains the last four images it captured before losing signal. New data received from the spacecraft Voyager 2. Its trajectory was disturbed by a moon-sized object outside the solar system. The probe took this photograph of it. It appears to be the organic husk of a member of Zipetotec species that did not survive its interstellar trip. Holy shit! An entirely new species of animal-like organisms that's the size of an entire planet, approaching humanity's home at a great speed, and subsequently pollinating the surface of the Earth with ever-growing and fusing flesh seeds. I guess space is just another ecosystem now, and also it ate the James Webb Telescope. This obviously raises a lot of questions. For example, is making little seemingly sentient babies and throwing them point-blank at Earth considered child abuse or sexual assault? What about both? That's not what I meant. One very pressing question I have is, what the hell is this sentient meatball? And what's it doing? Some of the smart viewers might have figured it out already, but I believe we can get a better understanding of this big old boy by looking at the media that may have inspired it. This story has many parallels to another masterpiece by the name of Hellstar Romina, written by one Junji Ito. For those uncultured, slack-jawed dumb fucks that are unfamiliar with Hellstar Romina, it goes a little something like this. One day, every human on Earth is doing normal human things, like eating processed cheese and penetrating each other and expelling said processed cheese, when all of the sudden, they see another celestial body approaching their home planet of Earth. Eventually, they realize that this planet has a giant mouth, and when it gets to them, it slowly begins devouring Earth until it's all gone, cleaning its plate like a very good boy, and then they all lived happily ever after, unless they happen to not be a monster planet. The end. While the original concept of Hellstar Romina was to make the reader question everything they knew about the universe, like how planets usually aren't animals that run around consuming each other like the galaxy was the goddamn Serengeti, Zipe Totec seems to be more interested in explaining the nature of how creature planets would work. And I believe I understand the life cycle of this fascinating new little critter you got here. Well, I don't know if I believe it, but I sure as hell can make it up from source material and evidence. This planet starts as tiny pimple-like spores that branch off from the larger planet. It waits on the surface of its mama, loosely attached to each other by a thin, fragile membrane. When the mother Zipetotec specimen gets close enough to a target planet to be affected by its gravity, the resulting force eventually pulls hard enough to separate the spores from their membranes. Some of these spores end up making their way to the target planet in question, and the spores begin to colonize it. <laughs> they grow up so fast. As all creatures do, the spores begin to convert environmental biomass into their own bodies. However, unlike Earth life, these meat blobs all work together in attempts to convert the entire planet into iterations of themselves. You could learn a thing or two from these giant cancer cells, I tell ya. Eventually, these blobs replace the entirety of biological life on the surface, and combine to form one massive singular organism, with each meaty blob acting like an individual cell. These meat blobs act more specifically like stem cells, and begin to diversify into organs, veins, muscles, balls, whatever piece is a complete animal may need. Neat, right? Well, it's a glimpse into your future, so not really neat for you. Nature is just so beautiful sometimes. I mean, not right now. I'm struggling to think of anything more horrible. I don't know, hug the nearest raccoon. This stage of its life is completed when there's no more local biomass left on the planet. It then slowly starves while looking for a new victim, I mean nursery, planet for the next generation of space meatballs. It ends its life as many organisms do. The noble skeleton. If it ain't broke, don't fix it. To a fish, the ocean is the world. To an ant, the forest is the world. To a bacterium, the skin around your rectum is the world. 
This work really makes you question your place in the universe, doesn't it? I mean, it makes you question. I know where I stand, cell phone ape. This was based on the Eduardo Valdez Heavia's story and art collection called Zipe Totec, which you should all go check out because it's fucking awesome. If you want me to check out more similar works, make sure to like, comment, and subscribe with all notifications enabled, or I'll feed you to the space meatball. Shout out the inner circle. Love y'all. It's it, bye. <laughs>